Hey folks, Josh Ryan, Band of Brio Farms, Eaton County, Michigan. Uh, standing with our sprayer uh, that we use. This is a Haggy 250. Uh, these are made in the early 90s. Or ours is a 1991 anyway. Um, so when we first got the sprayer, we had a really big problem with uh, priming. So I think this is kind of in line with what one of their DTS sprayers would be today, uh, dual tank. It's got 250 gallon tanks on both sides, but you can see the tanks are kind of down, you know, down in between. They, they're positioned between the rows and they're kind of lower. And uh, the problem comes from the fact that the pump, at least on this unit, maybe somebody moved it, the pump is right behind this, uh, this plate here. And so the, the pump is higher than the water level or at least the fact of the suction hose goes way up coming off of the tank. Suction hose is way up here. And uh, these centripetal pumps, they just don't create any, um, any suction really. Once, once they're primed, then you're fine. But getting the thing to prime is, I, I, I would spend an hour doing, changing valves around and everything else. No matter what the water level got up to in the tank, uh, it takes a long time. So finally figured out that riddle and I uh, think found it. Now I can prime it up in basically 10 seconds, switch around some valves and, and we start spraying. So if you're having trouble with uh, with priming on your Haggy, you got a similar setup to where your water, you know, your tank level is not above your pump. Stay tuned. I'm going to walk you through the modification that we were able to achieve that fix that issue. All right, folks, so a little bit of continuation on. Here's the front of the sprayer, right up on a ladder here. Um, these are suction lines coming in from the tank, and you can see how high they are because they take them over the front axle. Got this one here, kind of teased together underneath here, and the other one takes off. Goes to the other tank down through there, up over and across on that side as well. And so you can see, you know, this is a hydraulic driven centripetal style pump. And when you don't have these things, uh, if that's not full of water and primed up, they just don't have any suction to help yourself out. So I would do different things of hooking up the hose and leaving my transfer pump going to try to flood that with water, you know, in order to get the system primed. And it just would take forever. So the fix is this fella here, not that it necessarily has to be this particular one, but this uh, this guy here does have pretty good specs. Maybe I can kind of show what it is. He's, a, he's available at TSC, and the reason I went with him is because he's got a really high suction rating, like 14 feet of suction. So what I've done the whole goal is to try to flood this chamber with water. And, you know, here's your outlet on the back side going vertical. One side goes through the strainer and off towards the boom. The other side goes off. We have, here's our pressure regulator. You know, so anytime you're over pressure, it's sending it right back to the intake of the pump. And then it goes on from there. That horizontal T-valve is going off. It's going back to the tanks for your agitation. And then this, this newer valve here is the intake to this pump. So the top, top port here is the intake. Bottom is the outlet. And so what I'm doing, or the whole goal, since this pump has so much more suction, I wanted to tie in somewhere after you know somewhere above this pump so i'm tying in here with the suction line and right now this valve's closed but when i'd go to prime i'd turn i'd turn both of these valves so they're locked out i don't know if i can really reach this one over here for now but we will just there we go so i s set the pump up like this i'll turn and then I engage my what I'm calling my priming pump. And that's going to suck water up through the intake to the hydraulic pump, fill up this whole cavity, which is what we need to do to prime. 
pull water all the way up through, you know, um, and it's not, I mean, it, water can get in the section, but your, since your boom valves are off, you know, water's not really, you're not going to push any water that way. Pull water all the way up through. We've closed off the far one that would go for agitation, right? And then, so then we're sucking the water up through all the way to this pump. Comes back this way to the outlet. And then I tie it back into the agitation lines on the back side of the existing ball valve that was there before. And the reason you have to do that, to have a ball valve there, is if that's all open, then rather than pulling water up through the supply lines from the tank, you're just going to suck air, potentially, depending on your tank level, you'll suck air back through your agitation lines. So you want to make sure that the system is airtight and that you're only pulling air, you know, or water in this case, from your supply lines from the tanks. So I have that on and then once I have, you know, once I kick that on, you wait just a little bit, you can almost tell when the, the pump, this pump will kind of change in tune or tone, you know, when it actually has water up to it. And once you're there, then you start engaging your centripetal pump with your hydraulic valve. You start cranking that up and you'll, you'll know when it's working because obviously you'll show pressure. And, and then once you have pressure, on that, you can turn uh, turn your the diaphragm style pump off. You know what I'm calling the priming pump. And I don't, who knows how uh, you folks will have your all this set up, but and then I have to switch these back on my on this particular sprayer, and so that makes it so pressure from the pump doesn't come back up to this. Up to this guy just cuts off that pressure and now I'm sending the you know that water back onto agitation from the pump the way it was set up originally from the factory or at least how I received this maybe somebody else messed around with this before so that's the whole setup but uh, yeah so the whole principle is taking advantage of the fact that there's different styles of pump out there centripetal pumps flow a lot of water with very little pressure Diaphragm pumps don't flow as much. Well, probably could if they were bigger, but this particular, just a 12 volt pump, doesn't flow as much, but has a lot more suction, 14 foot of suction. So as long as you don't have any air leaks, this will pull it up. I, I will admit when uh, I first hooked all this up, I turned it on and it wasn't really working. And it was because this guy right here was just a little bit loose and you couldn't even hear it sucking air but luck I got lucky and was able to locate that tighten that down got rid of the air leaks and as soon as I did the pump changed in tone because you know now it was starting to actually pull some water up through and so it should work as long as uh, yeah if you if you set it up like this and you're having problems start looking for air leaks whether it's you know, anything downstream down to your boom side too, uh, this particular unit has your, has the control valves for the boom up on top of the boom arm. Sorry if I'm making you a little oozy there, all my moving around, but you got to make sure everything from those control valves back is airtight or you're going to pull air from this side, you know, and, uh, you know, from your, make sure all your strainers are tight all your ball valves from your tank, you know, everything has to be airtight and then you should have no problem. Uh, this here is the, I think it's, um, 60 PSI. This is the high flow version of this pump. I, I want to say it was like 4.5 gallons per minute. They do make another one, has the exact same suction rating of 14 feet that was only like 2.1 or 2.2. Probably would do the same thing, same functionality and work just as good. I just went with a larger one thinking that that would suck the air out of the system and prime the prime it up a little faster. I don't need the flow because I'm not going to do any spring with it. I'm just trying to make sure I can pull as much water as fast as possible up from the suction line. So anyway, long explanation, but uh, man, I'm, in, unless it's just how this uh, 
this particular one was set up, I would think that other people would be having some problems on how these these sprayers with the dual tank design where your pump is so much higher than your water level would be having some priming issues. This is how we solved it. Works really good. Like I say, in, in 10 seconds the system's primed and, and you're ready to spray and then you just gotta turn the suction valve, you know, turn your priming pump off, switch some valves around, um, you know, back to so it's set up like the original configuration and you're off to the races. So Anyway, Josh Ryan, Banabrio Farms. Hope you guys are having a great growing season, and I wish you all the best uh, the coming harvest.